Greetings, Boogie fans! Michael here, and welcome to the semi-finals of MNJ TV's Metronome League. Before we dive into the matches, though, let's do our recap of the quarterfinals. First was the six-seed Entry Hazards versus the three-seed Intimidation. The first battle started off as a slow, evenly matched face-off, but once the final four Pokémon came in, momentum swung heavily in the Intimidation's favor. The Natos and Chopper performed excellently, giving the Intimidation the round one win. Round two was much more one-sided. Two KOs happened early, but the Intimidation got far more big hits, culminating in a surf from Chopper KOing every Pokemon on the field. It was then Thanatos and Chopper up against Snackinold, and while Snackinold did stick around for a while, it failed to do almost any damage to its opponents. The Intimidation won the match two battles to zero. Next was the four seed Miss Mavens versus the five seed Hive Mind. The first battle was an absolute decimation. Gold the Hitmonchan and Adventure the Sableye never left the field as they took out all four of the Mist Maven's Pokemon, getting revenge for the Mist Maven's regular season 4-0 defeat of the Hive Mind. Round two started off with some momentum for the Mist Maven's with a quick KO, but the Hive Mind brought it back with big KOs one after another, a memorable one being Adventure taking down Bermuda with Bullet Seed. The Hive Mind pull off the upset, taking the match two battles to zero. The MVP for round one of the playoffs is Adventure the Sableye. It and Gold the Hitmonchan were incredible in the first battle against the Miss Mavens, and then Adventure helped out a lot in round two as well, especially that really big KO up against Bermuda the Blissey. Additionally, while Hellion Spawn totally walled Adventure's prankster moves, Adventure also walled Hellion Spawns, which helped out a lot when it was Adventure and another Pokemon up against just Hellion Spawn, making half of its attacks do nothing. This was the playoff picture going into the first round, and this is the bracket now before the semi-final matches. The Hive Mind were the lowest surviving seed, so will take on the still undefeated Bolt Strikers, while the Intimidation were the highest surviving seed, and will take on the Shadow Storm. Like last week, these battles will be best two out of three. So don't forget to subscribe to my channel since less than half of my viewers are actually subscribed, which saddens me. And let's dive into the semifinals for M&J TV's Metronome League. Our first match of the semifinals is the undefeated Bolt Strikers up against the five seed Hive Mind. The Bolt Strikers handily defeated the Hive Mind earlier in the season, so the Hive Mind are definitely considered the underdogs for this battle. However, they had a dominant wind in round one and therefore have more momentum. I'm excited to see how this turns out. Tinker and Rush on, are the leaders for the Bolt Strikers, while Gold and Adventure are the leaders for the Hive Mind. Adventure goes first and gets Slash. Good strong move. Though it doesn't do a whole lot to Rush. Next, Tinker gets to move and gets Zing Zap. Doesn't do much damage. Might flinch it though. No, it does not. Gold will get to attack today. Poison Powder. Ooh, and it hits on to Rush. And that is an excellent move for the Hive Mind. Rush will now be starting to get worn down by that poison. You can see it's moving a bit slower. Confuse Ray. Lands onto a venture. I expect we'll see a switch on the hive mind's side shortly to get rid of that confusion. Rush starts taking some poison damage. And a somewhat eventful turn. No craziness, but a bit of a bit of things happening. Let's see. Yep, there's the adventure withdrawal as expected. And Luna comes in. I expect the Hive Mind will be preserving Chanel for his, to come out as late as possible up against. Oh, Sludge Wave! Oh, this hits everyone! Oh, and Rush is down! Almost! But it will be due to the poison! Waterfall from Gold. And now Rush is down! Wow! What an honestly terrible move by Tinker. 
That did far more damage to Rush than it did to Luna, despite being super effective against both. Tinker must feel terrible. And now, the Hive Mind have taken a Pokemon lead. Tinker gets Heal Pulse. Tinker is collapsing under the pressure of the playoffs and has two consecutive awful moves. They might need to bench it just to get it, give it a talk. Let him get his stuff into gear. Icicle Spear coming from Gold onto Disco. Disco very eager to win this year. Disco's father Tango won back in the MBF. Arm Thrust answering with its own multi-hit move. Icicle Crash only hit twice. Arm Thrust now has hit three, four, and five. Will not KO, but that was maximum damage from Arm Thrust there on Disco. Good move. Now Luna gets to move. And Luna gets Uproar. Oh, this is fantastic for the Hive Mind. Uproar, good chunk of damage, and that will continue to attack. Moves like Rollout and Thrash and Uproar are excellent in Metronome because it's reliable damage. It seems that the Bolt Strikers are opting to switch out Ludicolo for Roybos to see if Roybos can tank the normal type Uproar. But I don't honestly know how the targeting works. Tinker goes next and gets high jump kick and does not miss. Lands onto gold and that is a KO. Now both sides have three Pokemon left standing. Luna is still yelling with its tiny little mouth and it targeted Tinker that time. Roy Boss did not absorb it. It's possible Uproar knows to change targets if a ghost type is there, I'm not sure. In comes Chanel the Aromatisse to block the Cursed Body of Roybos. Cursed Body caused quite a lot of problems for lots of teams this season. An Aroma Veil Pokemon are here to stop that. Tinker gets Mud Shot, lands it onto Luna. Does about a fifth quarter. Drops Luna's speed. Luna was never that fast though. I sh I'm sure she doesn't mind. Shadow Punch, a stab move from Roybos. Does a decent chunk of damage to Chanel there, but Roy Boss has poor physical attack and the another uproar into Tinker. Wow, lots of damage coming out from Luna. Heal Bell will not work. None of those, none of the Hive Mind Pokemon have any status conditions. And I just saw that Luna calmed down. The uproar damage is done, which I'm sure the Bolt Strikers are grateful for. Let's see what Tinker's able to do here and gets Giga Drain. Ooh, it's gonna be healing some. Chanel's down to about half. How much will this heal Tinker? Back up to just shy of half. Okay, Tinker trying to make up for its terrible moves earlier in the game. Tail Whip, ah, dropping the physical defense of both enemy Pokemon. Don't know what part of Poltegeist is its tail. Maybe it just morphs into a tail itself because it seems to be able to do that. Luna gets scale shot, but it targets the fairy type. No damage there, but also no stat drop either. Chanel gets entrainment. Ooh, entrainment on to Tinker who will lose technician and get Aroma Veil instead. Both technician and Aroma Veil are good abilities, but I think the Bolt Strikers are probably fine with Aroma Veil because it will stop any sort of taunting or tormenting and such. Bullet punch from Tinker. That will be super effective, but it will not be technician boosted. So that was a good entrainment by Chanel. That would have done, that'll, that would have done a bit more. Poison jab, another super effective move. Oh, the Bolt Strikers, are they gonna bring this back? Oh, massive damage to Luna. My gosh, she holds on though. No super effect, or no poison, but it wouldn't have mattered because of Magic Guard, Fury swipes onto Tinker. That's three, and that's it. Tinker will not fall to that Fury swipes. Chanel gets Moonlight and heals back up. Oh, what an excellent heal by Chanel. Chanel's probably the most important Pokemon for the Hive Mind right now because she's the one that protects against Roy Boss, completely healthy Roy Boss's cursed body. So Chanel healing back up there was an extremely clutch. 
Tinker gets tackled. This will do a bit of damage, but again, not technician boosted. It is enough to KO Luna though. It is a crit. Luna will go down and a venture will come in. The Bolt Strikers have taken the advantage back. Bone Rush does miss though. Chanel gets Whirlwind, which will be forcing Tinker out. In comes Disco, the Ludicolo. Now, both of the Hive Minds Pokemon are fully healthy. Tinker is almost down, Disco's at half, and Roy Boss is still fully healthy. So I think overall, the Bold Strikers still have the lead. Adventure against Horn Attack does not target the Ghost type. Good chunk of damage onto Disco there. What will Disco fire back with? Power swap. I believe that swaps the changes and both of these Pokemon just hit the field. So neither have any changes. Roy Boss gets triple Axel. One, two, three. All three of them hit and adventures down to half. Chanel gets happy hour. Not the time, Chanel. I know we all enjoy a happy atmosphere, but now you're in combat. Venture, using Prankster to go first, gets Pain Split. Who's it onto though? It's onto Roy Boss. That will heal a Venture and hurt Roy Boss. Pretty solid move there. By a, actually, no, I'd say it's a great move. That healed a Venture a lot. Lava Plume, this hits everyone. Oh, this might activate Roy Boss's Cursed Body. It burns Roy Boss. No cursed body, but it Disco did burn its own Pokemon. Brassy Terrain coming out. This will slowly heal everyone. That will help uh, help offset the burn damage by a bit. But man, the Bolt Strikers struggling with harming their own teammates today. First the Sludge Wave and now the Lava Plume. Bounce from Chanel. And Chanel enters the sky. Disco and Roy Boss will get some HP back as will Aventure. Chanel will not this turn because she is above the ground. And Roy Boss takes the burn damage, which I don't actually know if it's the same or more than the grassy terrain healing. I think they're the same. Let's see what Aventure gets here. And it's Smackdown. Hits Disco, who is now very low. Grassy Terrain will heal it a bit more after this turn, though. Imprison from Disco! Ooh, did that just seal it? The bounce will still be coming in, though. Water Shuriken on to Adventure. One, two, only two. Ooh, if that had done four, I think it would have KO'd. Who's the bounce target? It targets Roy Boss. Wait, the Imprison might actually be a bad thing for the Bolt Strikers. Because now both of the Hive Mind's Pokemon are guaranteed to attack. And both, all three actually, all three of the Bolt Strikers Pokemon are in red HP. Unless the Bolt Strikers can do some big damage here, they might have just sealed the loss with that Imprison. Hyper Beam, but it's on to Adventure. Roy Boss gets Sand Attack. That could make a Struggle Miss, but if it misses, they don't hurt themselves. Can Struggle Miss? I'm not sure. I think it has. Adventure gets the Struggle. That takes out Roy Boss. Adventure holds on, and now Chanel's Struggle takes out Disco. I was right, the Imprison was a bad thing. Imprison helps if the enemy Pokemon are at low enough HP and you are at high enough HP. But since all three of the Bolt Strikers Pokemon were in red, it doomed them. Although Tinker could still bring it back, it's just at a severe disadvantage.
Aventure gets lash out and this should end it. It's a neutral hit. And the hive mind upset the bolt strikers and take round one. But there's still one or two battles left. After an exciting round one battle between the bolt strikers and the hive mind, it's now time for round two. If the hive mind win this battle, it is over and they will be moving on to the finals. However, if the bolt strikers win, they will force a battle three. I almost said game three, but this whole thing is kind of the game. I don't know, is this like a basketball thing? I don't know. Aventure goes first, thanks to Prankster and gets Mud Slap, will drop one of the bolt strikers Pokemon's accuracy, which means they'll probably want to switch it because no one likes having their accuracy dropped. Tinker gets Disable. On to Aventure. I anticipate both Tinker and Aventure will be switching next turn because otherwise Aventure would struggle. Gold goes next and gets Venom Drench. I believe it fails if the target is not poisoned, but I'm not certain. Slurpuff, Rush gets Weather Ball. It targets Gold as Aventure would have been immune and does a bit of damage. This next turn likely won't be super eventful. As you can see on the screen, Tinker will be switching out and Aventure will most certainly be switching out. They'd be foolish to leave him in. As we wait for those commands to be entered, Tinker exits the field. Disco coming back out in Tinker's place and Aventure will be sitting on the bench for a little bit as to no longer be disabled. Gold will get to move and gets Rock Slide. Will hit both. And will it, oh, it was a crit on Rush. Oh, and it made Rush flinch. Wow, rough turn for Rush there. Pretty solid move for Gold, by Gold. Gold moves next and gets Petal Blizzard. This will hit everyone on the field. Wow, did more than I thought to Rush and uh, Disco. Growl, Rush is dropping the physical attack of both enemy Pokemon. Well, that's right, Petal Blizzard is physical. I keep thinking it's special. That's why I did so much damage. I was like, oh, it's a special move. It won't do much. But I was wrong, it happens. No one's perfect. Disco gets payback. Who's it gonna target? It targets Luna. Ah, not double damage because Gold was the one who hit it and it was resisted. Psy Shock from Luna. This is on to Rush, who is hurting. Still holding on, but not doing great. Double checking the stats here. Hive Mind once again are at an advantage. Both teams still have all four Pokemon, but the Hive Mind's Pokemon are healthier. Gold gets Scald. It hits Rush, and Rush goes down. The Hive Mind taking advantage. Rush, once again, the first Pokemon to faint. Disco answers back with a skill swap. Disco will be taking Luna's Magic Guard. I think Disco's quite fine with that. Magic Guard is excellent. Rain Dish is very situational. Luna might be switching out next turn. Spore fails as Disco is a grass type. I think we'll see Luna switch this turn to get Magic Guard back. Tinker comes back in after switching out for the accuracy drop. Sweet, whoa, whoa, that camera is it's really moving there. Luna switches out. Aventure enters the field once again. Let's see what Tinker is able to do here and Tinker gets Roar. Immediately forcing Aventure back out and Luna back in. Okay, well, welcome back Luna. You have Magic Guard again. Gold gets Water Spout. Okay, low special attack, but has decent health percentage. Oh, that did less than I thought. I mean, Disco resists it substantially, but 
Disco gets toxic spikes! Was really good for the Bolt Strikers. Any Pokemon that now comes in for the Hive Mind will be poisoned, which is really bad for them. I mean, if Luna swapped in, she'd be fine because of Magic Guard. But Luna's already here. Psychic Fangs, who's it on to? It's on to Gold! Stab, super effective, massive damage! The hive mind need a defog or a rapid spin. Acupressure, ooh. On to Luna, ooh. Sharply raising its evasiveness. Luna's gonna be a lot harder to hit now. Leech life from Disco targets. Targets gold, it's resisted, but it's enough to get the KO. Hive mind will be forced to bring in a Pokemon that will be poisoned. Toxic spikes are difficult to overcome in Metronome. Pain split from Luna onto Disco. Oh, that was a rough turn of events for the Hive Mind. In comes Adventure. It was poisoned by the toxic spikes. Toxic spikes are easier to handle in doubles than they are in singles, but they can still be a problem. Adventure gets Storm Throw. This will be a critical hit, but it is onto the Pokemon that four times resists it. Been much better to hit Disco there. Tinker gets Charge. If it happens to get an electric move next turn, it'll be boosted, but that's unlikely. It's probably just boosting its special defense. Disco gets Tail Slap, but onto the Ghost type, and it does no damage. Luna gets Sing, and it hits. Disco will be taking a bit of a Nappy Wappy. Adventure takes its first bit of poison damage. Ooh, quite the chunk there. It's not toxic poison, but still, poison hurts more than a burn does. Disco is, seems like it's having good dreams. It's still dancing in its sleep. Adventure gets Doom Desire. Who will this be targeting? Tinker gets Blast Burn. Very powerful move. Hits Adventure, who goes down. The Bolt Strikers have resoundingly taken the momentum back. Luna gets Flash Cannon, and it targets Disco, who resists it. Would have been quite devastating against Tinker, but Luna, with its heightened evasiveness, so focused on avoiding damage, it targeted the wrong Pokemon. In comes Chanel who will also be poisoned. And now every Pokemon that could be poisoned by Toxic Spikes, well, I mean, Gold could have left and come back in, but Chanel will be worn down. Tinker recharges after the very effective Blast Burn. Double kick from Disco, this will be resisted. Chanel didn't mind that at all. Luna? gets Magic Room. Held items will lose their effects, and despite all this time, I still have not looked up how Magic Room impacts berries. I don't know if it you eat the berry and it doesn't work, or if the berries just never get eaten. Air Cutter, this is super effective on a Disco, but it does not KO. More poison damage coming onto Chanel here. Old Striker's in the more favorable position. Gets Bone Rush. And it targets Chanel. Despite Luna's raised evasiveness, the Bolt Strikers have just not been targeting her. Maybe they're trying to make it a 2v1 so that misses won't be as devastating. Agility by Disco. 
Not sure that really mattered, as the Bolt Strikers, both of them were already faster. But I guess Disco will now be faster than Tinker. Luna gets Shell Sidearm! This will be super effective on both! And it takes down Disco! Might have been actually better to hit Tinker there, because Tinker's healthier, and probably would have KO'd Tinker. Chanel gets spit up, but is having an empty stomach. Poison, run it down even more, and now a completely healthy Roy boss will be entering the field for the Bolt Strikers. Chanel is there to block the Cursed Body, but they gotta hit it still. Tinker gets Parabolic Charge. This hits everyone, including Roy Boss. It might activate Cursed Body. Tinker will heal back up, though. Wow, might, might go all the way to full. We're close to it. Not quite full. Let's see what Luna does here. Gets Nasty Plot. Oh, Luna looking to set up and do some big damage here. Luna now dangerous. Chanel might be going down soon, but Luna is gonna be hard to hit and hits hard. Metal Sound by Roy Boss, and it lands on Luna. Luna's survivability just went substantially down due to harshly lowering its special defense. Chanel gets double kick, doesn't affect the ghostly teapot inhabiting thing of tea. Chanel will fall to poison next turn unless it heals. I've my need Chanel around, otherwise Cursed Body is just gonna end things. Tinker gets Power Gem, and Luna avoids it, thanks to the Acupressure earlier. Roy Boss gets Shadow Punch, another stab Shadow Punch, and hits Chanel, and Chanel is down. This battle is not over, but Luna's in a tough spot because now, while it's gonna be tougher to hit, oh, really tougher to hit now, especially by Tinker, if it hits Roy Boss and activates Cursed Body, that's, that's a problem. <laughs> it's gonna be tough for the Hive Mind to win this, really tough. We've seen some crazier comebacks, but this is an uphill battle. Focus Blast misses. Probably would have missed anyways, despite all the accuracy and invasiveness modifications. Electric Terrain, ooh, not what Luna needs to be doing right now. Luna needs to be getting damage, not just making it so no one can sleep. Roy Boss gets Arm Thrust, this will be resisted. Yes, there's no possible way for this to KO. It's three times. Luna will have another chance and Magic Room goes away. Don't think it really ever mattered. Tinker gets Sacred Sword and misses again. Not really Tinker's fault. Flatter. Confusing Roy Boss, but boosting its already very good special attack. Question the decision making behind that. Oh, Roy Boss does hurt itself though. Okay, maybe this might play, maybe this might work out for Luna. Roy Boss is gonna have to keep hurting itself though. Tinker gets Torment. Oh, that might have just sealed it. That almost certainly sealed it. Luna gets to use Metronome here, but has to struggle next turn, and the recoil probably KOs it. Ancient power, though. This is nasty plotted. Big damage to Roy Boss, but Roy Boss survives thanks to its excellent special defense. Roy Boss gets Metronome through the confusion and gets Fire Blast, and if this hits, and it's over. Luna goes down, and the Bolt Strikers force a round three. One battle left, and the winner takes all. And now for the final battle of the Bolt Strikers versus the Hive Mind. The winner of this will be in the finals, and the loser 
will have their season end here. Both teams lead with the same Pokemon that they led with for the first two rounds. Consistency is key after all. Adventure moves first, as always, almost always, and gets Sleep Powder, but rushes Sweet Veil. Stops it. A Veil of Sweetness. It's weird to see it written like that. First impression from Tinker actually on the first turn. Not a whole lot of damage there, but the move did succeed. Gold gets Rising Voltage. This move doubles power on electric terrain. This is a special move though, and uh, special moves are not gold's strong suit. Vice Grip from Rush, which hits the ghost type and does nothing. So a little bit of damage exchanged on that turn, but not a whole lot. Blizzard from Adventure hits both. Decent chunk of damage to both Tinker and Rush. Tinker. Ah, Flare Blitz. Oh, let's see how much this does. Ooh, about a quarter to gold there. Tinker taking some recoil damage though, and Tinker's already down to only about half. Gold gets Zap Cannon and actually hits it. Rush now paralyzed. Oh, Rush has had to deal with quite the status conditions this, this match. Amnesia though. Rush trying to increase its special longevity. I'd say overall that was a better turn for, well, maybe the Flare Blitz was a good amount of damage. Adventure, Leaf Blade on to Tinker, and Tinker is almost down. If that had been a crit, that would have KO'd. Tinker gets Icy Wind, answering the Blizzard with an Icy Wind. Will slow down both enemy Pokemon. Oh wow, that was a lot of damage. A lot more damage than I thought. Wow, Tinker's got, um, Technician. It was a Technician boosted Icy Wind, that's right. Forget about Technician. Smart Strike, Physical Steel move, super effective. And Rush is done. For the third battle in a row, Rush is the very first Pokemon to faint. Wow, the Hive Mind have quite the advantage now. Four Pokemon to three, but Tinker only has nine HP left. Adventure gets Glare. KO'd one paralyzed Pokemon and now paralyzes another. Disco's dancing has been slowed. First impression again, everybody knows, you can never overcome a first impression. You can, I'm kidding, it just takes a lot of impressions. Frost Breath. Neutral hit, guaranteed crit, but gold's low special attack means that not much damage under the high special defense Disco. Disco gets Sacred Sword, does not hit the ghost type adventure. Adventure, Metronome, and Cut. Who's it on to? It's on to Tinker. The Hive Mind have a four Pokemon to two lead. Gold gets Magic Powder, but it fails against a Grass type. Powder moves do not work against Grass types. I I only, is it just cause like plants are just powdery in general? I mean, I know like poison powder. I feel like a lot of bugs type moves, those powders too. Anyways, time for adventures. Next move, conversion two, ooh. and that will turn Adventure into a flying type. Ah, since flying resists Sacred Sword. Roost from Roy Boss. Roy Boss is already healthy, so it does nothing. Gold gets Icicle Crash. Wow, we, ha we have seen a lot of ice type moves in this battle. Blizzard, Icy Wind, Icicle Crash. Oh wow, that did a good chunk to Disco there. Frost Breath. Yeah, wow, we've seen a lot. Slam. This might KO. It does not. Gold holds on. 
Should I say gold? Gold's on. Iron Tail from Adventure, it does not miss. This is resisted though. And Disco being really worn down, the hive mind are rolling here. Waterfall from Roy Boss has low physical attack, but is it enough to KO Gold? Yes, it is. Three Pokemon to two. Disco gets Fiery Dance. Ooh, this is a good move. And the Bolt Strikers have brought it back to 2v2 and Disco's got plus one special attack. Ooh, this is the excitement you love to see, isn't it? Looked like the Hive Mind were dominating, but two really good moves there. Now, both of the Hive Mind's Pokemon are fully healthy. Roy Boss is fully healthy, except it's used a couple metronomes. Disco is hurting. So the Hive Mind still have the advantage. But if the Bolt Strikers can take out Chanel and Cursed Body starts causing problems, Will-O-Wisp, who's this on? It is onto the wrong Pokemon. Luna will have dropped physical attack, but will not be hurt by the burn. I'm sure they would have rather burned Chanel. Speed Swap onto Disco. I don't know if this deals with the Paralysis Speed modification or not. Luna just becomes super slow or not. Zen Headbutt from Chanel. This will hit Roy Boss. Good chunk of damage there, and Aroma Veil stops the Cursed Body. Disco is fully paralyzed for the first time. Pretty good turn there for the Hive Mind. Luna eating up that burn. Earth Power, another good special move. On to Roy Boss, who does not resist it like Disco does, and Roy Boss is down. The Hive Mind are close to making it to the finals. Leaf Blade from Roy Boss, a physical move. Roy Boss needs special moves. Did a good chunk of damage there, about a quarter. Chanel gets Dragon Rush and does not miss. This is onto Roy Boss. And Roy Boss is done with a crit Dragon Rush. Disco is all that's left for the Bolt Strikers. Flash Cannon, this is super effective. This might KO something. It does not, Chanel holds on. Was massive damage though, Disco could still bring this back. Are the Hive Mind about to pull off the incredible upset against the Bolt Strikers? Incinerate? It's not enough, but Disco now is on a timer because it can't get any metronomes back. Chanel gets Kinesis, this does not do damage. It drops accuracy, ooh, not what you like to see if you're the Bolt Strikers. Disco gets Reversal, ooh, this will be high power but resisted. Chanel holds on, still! Almost any attack from Luna or Chanel will send the Hive Mind to the finals. Agility, not an attack. Luna's already the fastest Pokemon in the field. It's clear the Paralysis modifier doesn't apply to Speed Swap. Chanel gets Rock Slide. It lands. And the Hive Mind upset the undefeated Bolt Strikers. And will be going to the finals as the five seed. What an incredible, incredible showing. Our next semi-final match is the two seed Shadow Storm versus the three seed Intimidation. In the regular season, the Shadow Storm won this matchup. However, they both ended up with a five and two record at the end of the regular season. We'll see if it goes the same way as it did in the regular season today, as Buster and Armando are in the lead for the Shadow Storm, while Xamder and Springbok are out for the Intimidation. Xamder is the fastest Pokemon in the field, as usual, and gets Sparkling Aria. I believe this hits everyone on the field. Yes, it does. About a quarter to every Pokemon's health. Poison Jab coming out from Buster. 
Big hit. Wow, Xander's down to half. Two powerful strikes right off the bat here. Cross chop from Springbok onto Buster. It's super effective and Buster's down. My God. An incredible move from Springbok there. Dual wing beat from Armando. It doesn't get the super effective hit onto Springbok, but it doesn't matter because it's still KO Sander. At the end of the first turn, two Pokemon have fainted. The Shadow Storm and the Intimidation are here to fight. Chopper comes in for the Intimidation while Frosting comes in for the Shadow Storm. My gosh, trading massive blows. Springbok is now the fastest Pokemon on the field and gets Amnesia, bolstering its already decently solid special defense. First not attack so far. Chopper gets high horsepower, but targets the flying type. Armando goes next and gets Solar Blade. Oh, this is bad for the intimidation. If that targets Chopper, we'll probably see Chopper switch. Torment from Frosting. Oh, and it's on to Springbok. This is a tough call for the Intimidation. They need to switch Springbok out to get rid of the Torment, but they also need to switch Chopper out or else he'll be devastated by the Solar Blade. But they can't switch both. The Intimidation are gonna have to gamble on who they switch here. Guaranteed Struggle Recoil, I believe, onto Springbok. Or a potential Solar Blade onto Chopper. Looks like they are taking a while to make that call, which is fair, I would do the same. It's a very sticky situation for sure. And they withdraw Springbok. They're going to gamble on the Solar Blade, not targeting Chopper. Chopper will get to move though. And it gets Reflect. Oh, that's excellent. Now Solar Blade might not even KO, even if it does hit Chopper. Great move from Chopper there and Solar Blade will hit Thanatos. And the gamble pays off for the Intimidation. They escaped a sticky situation fantastically. Kinesis from Frosting. That will drop the accuracy, I believe, of Thanatos. Thanatos might want to switch back out soon, but does have to stay in on this turn due to the switching rules of the league. Cannot switch intentionally back to back. Chopper gets Thrash, ooh! That is fantastic for the Intimidation. That is reliable damage. That's doing a lot. Armando gets Moon Blast. It is on to Thanatos and it is not super effective, but Thanatos is now down to under half. Minus one accuracy and special attack. We'll likely see Thanatos switch soon. Thanatos gets Anchor Shot. Okay, this might be super effective. Ah, uh, no, it's not. It targets Armando. It's a neutral hit, but it was good damage. Ally switch, uh, not the time, Frosting. Uh, the turn is over and no targeting changes will be impacted by that. So pretty solid moves from everybody on the field that turn, except for Frosting. This is where Thanatos will likely switch out to get those stat drops back. Yep. And Springbok returns onto the field. Three fighting types and one fairy flying type. More thrash damage, and it's enough to KO Armando. I don't know if thrash changes targets part of the way through, but the ally switch may have, if it doesn't, it may have sealed that. And Frosting teleports, despite going to return to the field almost immediately. It will, okay, so it will make Kirina take whatever hits. Nope, never mind. Nope. That's not true. Chopper Thrash and Springbok came in. Yep, well, that was a uh, complete, complete waste of a move. <laughs> Frosting was on the left and moved to the right, now it's back on the left. 
Springbok gets thunder. Do you come from a land down under? Can you hear the thunder? And it's on to frosting. It's super effective, but frosting holds on. Chopper gets thrashed though, and finishes frosting off the intimidation after escaping that sticky solar blade situation are rolling. Now it's Kirina, a normal type with bad physical defense up against two fighting types, but she gets boom burst. This will hit both. Did it, uh, less than I was actually expecting, but that was a solid chunk to both. Kirina can still win this, but any decently powered physical moves from Chopper or Springbok will spell trouble. Chopper being withdrawn to get rid of that confusion brought on by the thrash. The Natos comes back in, exerting its pressure. You're gonna try and cut down on those metronomes faster. Springbok gets power split. And, well, I think Springbok's special attack got better, but Karina's physical attack certainly just got better. I think it makes the stats effectively equal, so that was, not sure how much that balances out, but we might see Kirina deal some decent physical attack damage now. Flatter from Springbok. Oh, wait. Kirina's confused with higher attack than normal, which means if she hits herself, it's gonna do a lot of damage. Confusion damage takes the attack compared to defense. So the Pokemon that take the most damage from confusion are those with high attack. Ooh, good flame charge there. Those with high attack and low defense. Karina's physical attack is normally terrible, terrible, but due to the power split, it's substantially better. She's hurting herself more than usual. High horsepower, this might KO if it hits. Karina holds on with two, but any, any move from Thanatos, poison powder, and this ends it. The poison damage will take out Kirina, which means the intimidation. Oh, also Kirina might just KO. No, okay. Arrest, maybe arrest. Bullet punch, that's not gonna do it. Bit of damage there, but it's not enough. The poison will take down Kirina and the intimidation Take a dominant round one. And now it's time for round two. If the Intimidation are able to win this battle, they will be in the finals. But if the Shadow Storm are able to get the win here, they will force a round three. Same leads for both teams here. We'll see if there's as many quick KOs as there was at the beginning of the last one. Xander moves first again. Bulk up, bolstering its two worst stats. That's not bad. Tail whip from Buster. That will drop the physical defense of both enemy Pokemon. Xander's back now down to neutral defense. But Springbok might need to switch here. Psy Shock, ooh! And it is on two? Ah, the wrong Pokemon. Not much damage to Buster there. Let's see what Armando does. Recover, but its HP is full. So unlike round one, the first turn is not particularly eventful. We're waiting for some switching decisions. Springbok is withdrawn. And in comes Chopper. Xander gets to move next and gets Shadow Bone, but it does not affect the pink cow. Buster gets headbutt, ooh! Stab normal type move, decent power hits Chopper. Good chunk of damage there, might make it flinch. Oh no, it won't, it, it was sent in on this turn, it's not moving anyways. Forest's Curse from Armando. Xamter is now a Grass Psychic type. It's like an Exeggutor. But it's a really weird kind of tree. Doesn't even look like a tree, honestly. 
Xander gets low kick. Is it on to? It's on to Armando. Ooh, good chunk of damage there thanks to the attack boost from the bulk up. Buster gets Soak. Oh, but Soak is absorbed by Water Absorb and Chopper heals there. Chopper gets Grass Knot, another weight-based move on this turn. Hits Armando and that was a good chunk of damage. Armando gets Fell Stinger. Wait, if that's, oh my God. Oh my God. Do you realize what this means? Drastically. Fell Stinger is a physical bug type move, which is why it obliterated Xander. But if it K if it's used to KO a Pokemon, the user's physical attack is raised drastically. The Shadow Storm now have a Machamp at plus three attack. Look. Oh my God. Armando is low on HP, but it is now extremely dangerous. It's gonna be able to obliterate most any of the Intimidation's Pokemon with any physical move. Buster gets Acrobatics. It's on a Chopper, it's super effective. Although it's not double power. This Buster does still have the Lepaberry. Chopper gets Power Trip. This will not do much, it does not have any stat changes. And it's dark, yep. It, Intimidation need to KO Armando, but that wasn't the right move to do it. Armando gets Rock Polish. Oh my God, now it's gonna be a double speed. Armando setting up to sweep. This is terrifying if you are an Intimidation fan. Wow, two back-to-back -back rock polishes. You don't see that very often. But Atos, no longer the slowest Pokemon in the field, I think, maybe? Maybe that made it fast enough, maybe it didn't, I don't know. Armando now moves first. Poltergeist! And it targets the Natos! This is physical and super effective! And it's a devastating Oko! My gosh, Armando is crushing the intimidation. Getting the perfect physical, super effective moves. Power Gem doesn't do much, but Chopper and Springbok are all that's left. Spore though, onto, ah, uh, onto the wrong Pokemon. Buster doesn't mind taking a nap. It's got a lot of HP. Armando was the one that they needed to put to sleep here. In comes Springbok, and now it's Springbok and Chopper up against all four of the Shadow Storm's Pokemon, one of which is a plus three attack, plus two speed Machamp. Stuffed Cheeks. Armando is now eating its Lepaberry and raising its physical defense. This, Armando is boosted like crazy. Light screen, Springbok trying to protect the intimidation, but they need protection from physical moves, not special moves right now. Chopper gets Skull Bash. Won't do anything this turn, but that, that has potential. But Armando did just boost its defense with stuffed cheeks, so maybe it won't even be enough to target Armando, to KO Armando. Let's see what Armando does here, and it gets play nice, okay. Springbok certainly prefers that over a play rough. Dropping Springbok's attack, Buster still taking a nappy wappy. Springbok gets recover, but its HP is full. Skull Bash, and Armando holds on. The, the stuffed cheeks saved it. My gosh, Armando's playing a damn near perfect game. Armando gets Venom Drench. Okay, all right, well, I take it back. Venom Drench didn't do anything. Buster gets Autotomize. Buster now very fast. Shadowstorm were already outspeeding the Intimidation, but now they're really 
Really doing it. Spring buckets, fire pledge onto, onto Buster, not much damage. Chopper gets Shadow Ball, and this will finally take down Armando. The Intimidation have been able to take down the devastatingly powerful Armando, but at what cost? I'll tell you what cost. Two of their Pokemon that were O-Code from full health. It is now Springbok and Chopper up against Buster, Frosting, and Kirina. Buster gets Magnetic Flux, doesn't work. There's no plus or minus Pokemon on the field. Springbok gets another Fire Pledge. I mean, lots of repeat moves today. On to Frosting, does a bit, but not a whole lot. Chopper gets Play Rough. Strong physical move onto Buster. And wow, that did that did way less than I thought it was going to. Expanding force. Frosting's expanding force. Onto Chopper. It's a psychic type move. It's super effective. Chopper held on though. The Chopper's getting low. Chopper's getting quite low. Absorb from Buster. Not super effective, not much damage. Not much healing. Springbok gets hail, ooh. Not what the intimidation need here. Shadow Storm don't mind, but that's gonna be wearing down the intimidation's Pokemon. And those are the only two left. Jaw lock, physical dark type move onto Buster. Wearing Buster down. Buster's now trapped here. Chopper already was. Moonblast! Frosty gets Moonblast on the two fighting types! Oh my god, the Shadow Storm are playing so well! The amount of strong, super effective moves they have gotten is insane. The Fell Stinger, the Poltergeist, the Moonblast. Wow. With the hail damage building up, I, I I don't know, I don't think the Intimidation can, can, can come back from this. Power Trick doesn't matter. Wow, Shadow Storm. They, they took that tough defeat in round one and they came roaring back. Cotton Guard from Springbok. Too bad it doesn't protect you from the hail. Although I will say, Imunli did look kind of funny surrounded in cotton like that. Leaf Blade from Chopper onto, ah, uh, the Pokemon that resists it. Wrong targeting there. Frosting gets Shockwave. Is that onto, okay, it's not onto Chopper, but it was enough. It didn't KO Springbok, but the hail will. And the victory at this point is all but guaranteed for the Shadow Storm. Chopper faints to two more hail damages. Chopper basically has to recover or rest or some other healing move this turn. Buster might just KO it right here though. And it does. The Shadow Storm take round two. And we're on to round three. Winner takes all. It all comes down to this. The winner of this battle is going to the finals and will face the hive mind. The loser will be going home. Same leads for both teams. Let's see how this plays out. Wow. Can I just say the battles today have been thrilling. I have greatly appreciated being your commentator. Flash Cannon from Xander. Good strong special move. Targets Armando, big chunk of damage there. Buster gets Tail Whip again. Second battle in a row, dropping the physical defense of both enemy Pokemon. Xander has not gotten the bulk up this time though, which means that it's gonna be dealing with minus one defense. Toxic. 
Ooh, nice move there. Armando has a timer on it. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, like it activated the guts, but uh, as it ally switches for no reason, Armando does not have guts. Armando has no guard. So the poison only harms it. Looks like the Shadow Storm will be letting Armando rest on the bench. Hopefully they can get a, uh, they're hoping to get a heal bell or aromatherapy by the time the, before Armando has to come back onto the field. Xander is withdrawn. Don't wanna have it. Uh, oh, both of them are withdrawn. All right, they want that, def the Intimidation want that defense back. And Armando switching out as we saw. So the only Pokemon moving this turn is Buster. Take down, oh! But Thanatos avoids it. Avoids it specifically. Buster has Scrappy, so it would have damaged if it had hit. Oh, Buster gets Memento! Oh my gosh! Buster missed the takedown and felt so guilty that it just KO'd itself. With potentially the worst self-KOing move it could have gotten. Submission, this won't do much damage. Like Healing Wish, they could have healed Armando. Explosion or Self-Destruct would have damaged Chopper. And no, and Thanatos, thanks to Scrappy. Thanatos wishes, okay, it'll be healing in a little bit. Final Gambit would have done a bunch of damage, but Memento just drops the stats of Chopper and Chopper can just get those back by switching. Frosting its Dark Pulse onto Thanatos, it's super effective. Good chunk of damage there, but but Thanatos will be having that wish come in soon. Cause after all, when you wish upon a star, it makes no difference who you are. You'll get health back. R R R. It's a famous Pokemon battling quote from uh, Mr. Krabs. Chopper switches out, uh, unsurprisingly, to get all those Memento stat drops back. So that really was just a completely wasted self-KOing move. Mega Punch, but it's onto the Ghost type. Thanatos gets Triple Kick. If this is on a Kirina, no, it's not. Okay. It's all three times, but Frosting four times resists that and doesn't mind some kicks at all. Frosting gets freeze dry. Decently strong special attack. Thanatos now down to below half, but here comes the wish. Thanatos back to close to full. Substantial advantage for the Intimidation right now. Because all their Pokemon, all four are still in green. Crab Hammer! Oh, oh, oh! A crit crab hammer, Oko's Kirina! Two of the Shadow Storm's Pokemon have now been taken down in one fell swoop. Volt Tackle onto the flying type. And Frosting is down! What? Oh my god! The Intimidation are decimating the Shadow Storm in the most pivotal battle of the season. And Armando's going down to toxic damage. I might be speaking too soon, but I think the Intimidation are going to the finals. That was one of the best turns I've seen all season. Fury attack hits four times. Wow, Armando needs to rest here if they want to win. Nope, just drops part of its body. Oh my God, I can't believe that the Memento, the Crab Hammer, the Volt Tackle, the Crit Crab Hammer, Thrash, this might just end it here. And yes, it will. The Intimidation are going to the finals after one of the most resounding rounds I have ever seen. That was dominant and fast.
blast. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are excited for the finals in probably less than a week. And that's all I have for now. So till next time, give hands. You gotta catch them all.